Welcome back guys this is part 3 of our classic rock piano riff which includes a bass line and then some interesting variations which you'd find all through the 80s and 90s music which guitar players do which piano players do and a lot of musicians do so the variations are reminiscent of some of those music 80s glam rock and that sort of stuff and also we continue to work on our piano skills hand coordination theory and upgrading those things chords chord inversions this specific part focuses on quick chord shifting okay and we are using arguably the most famous cadence of them all the plagal cadence also known as the amen cadence uh, amen as in in a church so you go the same old riff hope you've got this riff if you are if you just stumbled on part 3 don't forget to watch part 1 finish that off very quick and then come to this part because there we learn how the theory of this riff how to count it and i do it really slow so the riff again play along with me or pause the video and get your keyboards pulse so earlier parts we did pulse then we did the accented arpeggio so what's going to be different with this part is there's going to be different hit points and quick chord changes using a, a really nice sounding cadence i'll play it for you again you heard it in the intro video i'll play it again and just show you one, once i'm done that goes on and the right hand will go so what's happening there a major i'm playing it in this inversion kind of like it this way so you could do like this c sharp e a if your fingers are a bit smaller with mine it's a bit tricky so sometimes i play like this and avoid the thumb there could also play here this is also nice when you play e major you could invert like this with your ring finger playing the g sharp so this is your first job you have to get the ability to shift from a to e in this smooth manner it's not about the shifting it's about the rhythm pattern which should be at the forefront of your imagination so that's the rhythm which i'll break down very shortly so get these chords first so c sharp e a you could use your thumb or some people prefer their index finger and then the second chord you could go thumb middle ring or thumb index ring if your index was already there for the first chord stick it there if the middle was there for the first chord keep the middle for the second chord also so versus both approaches work fine you could also consider the other inversions or you can do the other a the normal you can do a root e first inversion So there are always three ways to change from chord to chord because of inversions. So you go or 
those are all the three ways of doing it if you have a doubt with chord inversions you need to follow the stuff we've talked about over the years actually we've done a lot of chord inversions uh, tutorials we've even put it in a neat playlist for you and it's on our website so chord inversions may be a topic you want to dive into deeper if you're uh, having a bit of a doubt with moving between the chords okay so for now the rhythm pattern is one and two and three so one and two and three and four and let's get that bar one first guys one and two and three and four and so let's try and do that with a pulse one and two and three and four and one and two. take a break let's not do the next bar till we get this and again ba, 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 and 3 and 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 3 and 4 and 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 again now in that stray bar or that free bar try and sing something just to be within the within the framework of the music right you always want to feel the music when you play then your subconscious will react well you know even when you're not playing it will decide to train itself and get it done pulse in the left hand that's the initial stage then then we'll do the riff for now it's the pulse in the left first bar only sing So now before I continue to get carried away uh, you can now get the second bar which is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 that's slightly tricky because you don't play at the on beat of the next bar right so ba 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 and ba at the end of the two of the second bar end of the two of the second bar yeah 1 and 2 and 3 give it a hold there i've notated it with a tie so hold it a bit longer da, 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 and and uh, uh, one and two and three and four two and three and four two and three and four only the second bar two and three and four and one and and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay two and three and four and one and two and three and four and with a pulse left hand pulse so both bars with the pulse there we go you read notation there's a notation for you if you don't read notation i've even circled where the beats are and meaning the off beats and 1 2 3 4 implying the down beats you'll find it on patreon you can head over there and it'll be a great support to our channel as well so uh moving forward we now need to set up a goal where we get the bass riff of the past videos the classic rock riff with that in the right hand which we learned now so you could start with one bar take a gap there and 
then fill it up fully. Speed. You can then play around with it a bit like um, can practice that. This is actually tricky for me because even I am making it up as we are talking. So, can sing it. That'll help. See when I did I did that Sometimes I may need I may end up changing the left hand bass because I'm thinking of something different in the right hand that doesn't mean the left hand bass has to be changed it just means that your hand coordination is not yet there and you need to practice like we all need to do so the riff for today for this video is the same thing we've learned but you can play around with it is what I'm saying once you've got it you could play around with it that'll be a very good 15 to 20 minute jam you know solo jam on the piano there we go it's a great feeling once you get the right hand and the left hand together so i would encourage you to keep trying once you get this your independence is going to be rock solid and hand independence is a is a skill which which is based on confidence it's not based on achievements i think it's it's more about what you feel as a player over the days or the weeks and months of practice do you feel better on the piano do you feel like your hands are you know playing different instruments so it's more for the mind and your mental state like how do you feel about hand independence do you feel confident about it from within it's not about how many things have i done you know that will always happen over time so don't go too much with respect to the goals of a pianist like i want to do this i need to do that not really just go with a process which you enjoy so i hope you enjoy this music and this riff and whatever i've composed in this lesson just keep at it it'll come and once you get this you'll have the confidence to play actual songs actual compositions of yours or just exercises which you jam on or improvisations right guys so before i leave this lesson or this part of the four part series i wanted to talk about a little bit on theory the plagal cadence so if you think about it these are this is a four of the e major scale or the e mixolydian scale and it's resolving very well in this plagal amen in this 4 to 1 very 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 rock and roll very rock very it's been used you you must have heard this already now what you could also do is transpose it and see how many scales you can play this on like you could do and then you could try this out on the key of d major what is that that's the the four of d is g and then go to c major what's the four of c F major C. By the way, I'm playing it in this rock context. Would be to not change my bass. Just keep E as the pivot. So actually, you could call this as an A slash E or a slash chord. So keep your E pivoted for the most part, and then slowly weave in the riff. which is also a drone of e then when you go to d you try
transpose the whole thing to D and you move your chords also to D. D, D, A, C, D, 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 A, C, D. So what's the plagal of D, guys? It'll be G to the D. And it's a nice movement. This is like a like a verse or a section of a song. B, C, B flat, maybe A flat, which is uh, F sharp. You can just practice all your skills. You can even play around like a. You can keep this same thing on E and do plagal cadences irrespective of E. Like you could do, you could do G, D and it adds a very ambient or very interesting vibe. So another way to remember the plagal cadences is using the circle of fifths. If you take C's neighbor, counterclockwise neighbor, that's F. If you take E's counterclockwise neighbor, that would be A. So that's exactly how the plagal cadences happen. A to the E, G to the D, F, F to the C and so on. So the plagal cadences should make it sound like an entire product, a finished section, a verse or a bridge or a chorus or whatever it may be. Right guys, so we've in this part we've taken the riff, we've now, we've played like a very quick change chord movement here which will train our in, inversion knowledge and our hand independence, there's some serious hand independence going on, right? And then you play, play around with it rhythmically if you want to improvise and then explore other plagal cadences. Right? So moving forward, we are now going to go on to variation 4, which will be a lick which I have composed, a fusion lick, like basically this one. So we now move into the world of 16th note, semi-quavers, with accents, with fusion, with the same old bass riff. We're going to realize very, very quickly that this bass riff doesn't get easier and easier as you keep adding stuff there. It will have to stand the test of time like a serious pillar-like sound. Hit that bell icon. It will give you an update when the next part is released and whenever any video is released. You could also hit that subscribe, give us a like and leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn in the future. Onward to part 4.